So, I, most folks probably know, was not here in 99. I was seven, and I was in the first grade. <laughs> Um, and I wanted folks in this room to get a picture of what happened in 99 and also kind of what that experience was like for folks. And so I'm going to introduce um, Arthur Stamoulis. He's the executive director of Citizens Trade Campaign, um, which is our national, kind of our, our national office. Um, they mobilize all the same folks that we do, working together to improve international trade policy. He came into trade organizing after participating in the Battle of Seattle in 1999, um, and now he's the coordinator, like I said, of CTC. So please give Arthur a warm welcome. for some of the younger folks, uh, is that the 1990s were just this period of intense gloating and hubris by neoliberal elites, right? The, the turn of millennium was supposedly the end of history. Uh, it had uh, so, this, you know, presumably been proven that there is no alternative to corporate globalization, right? The capitalists had defeated the Soviets. No one could think of any other options. <laughs> they, they had won, right? <laughs> Um, you know, the experts, you know, completely believed and, you know, it was just like known that the corporate, global, the corporate power building project of the WTO and, and similar institutions um, was completely the right and unquestionable way to move forward. And people believed this and, and celebrated it. Um, it was a big part of American culture back then. Uh, but here in Seattle, in the streets, there were tens of thousands of people who saw through that narrative, uh, who saw through what the World Trade Organization policies were about, uh, and many of those folks, particularly the younger folks, were willing to boldly and audaciously you know, put their bodies on the line against it. Um, let me just ask, how many people were part of the protest 20 years ago? All right, well thank you. Thank you for being part of the movement of movements then. Thank you for being part of it today. Um, you know, the phrase back then was, was one no, many yeses. Uh, you know, we knew that the WTO was about job outsourcing and wage suppression, union busting, uh, sweatshop labor. We knew it was about the concentration of agricultural supplies into fewer and fewer hands, uh, forced migration, 
the spread of pesticides, GMOs. Uh, you know, we knew it was about deforestation, dismantling regulations to protect our food, our air, our water, our soil, uh, accelerated global warming. We also knew it was just about boring, homogenized corporate culture. Uh, you know, and the alternative that our movements offered, you know, was not anti-trade. It was not anti-globalization, although, you know, those terms got thrust upon us. Uh, you know, we were not some sort of proto-Trumpian, let's close the borders type folks. Uh, instead, you know, we demanded good paying jobs, greater income equality, stronger unions, stronger cooperatives, um, you know, strengthened rural economies, immigrant rights, indigenous sovereignty, safe, affordable food, a healthy environment, a stable climate, and cultural diversity, not just for ourselves, but for people around the world. And these demands, you know, they weren't spelled out in one giant manifesto that all 50 to 70,000 of us signed, but they were evident, evident everywhere in Seattle that week, you know, in, in protests and chants, in puppetry, in, in, in signs and teachings and presentations, uh, and, and, you know, and just the wide range of organizations and individuals who had come from so many places with this spirit of resolve, of camaraderie, uh, of just a joyousness that I had certainly never witnessed on such a large scale before. And I gotta say, you know, those demands were expanded further in the countless protests and conferences and articles and workshops and, and debates and mobilizations across the country and across the globe that grew out of the protests here. Um, I lived in Maine in 99. I moved to Philadelphia in the summer of 2000. Uh, in both of those places, there was just an explosion of organizing and activism that, that was inspired by, by the WTO protests and that would not have happened without the WTO protests. And it was not just quote unquote summit hopping. Uh, you know, I can tell you firsthand that local organizing, you know, education, analysis building, skills training, the things that it takes to, w to build power locally, uh, that that was happening on a massive scale on the opposite side of the country as a result of the bravery and dedication and hard work of activists here. Uh, and in each of those arenas, you know, people were articulating ways that they thought our economy should be organized. Or if not, you know, at least certain ideas that should be prioritized in a democratic economy. You know, ideas like people with HIV and AIDS deserve world-class treatment regardless of their race, their income, or what country they live in. Ideas like, you know, consumers deserve the right to know how their food was produced. Ideas like, you know, insofar as you're gonna work for another person, you have the right to create a union free from threats, intimidation, violence. Ideas like that. Uh, you know, and I was in an event commemorating the WTO protests in New York a couple weeks ago, and one of the panelists there said, yeah, you know, like you had Pat Buchanan sniffing around the margins of the Seattle protests, but he was basically run out of town. <laughs> like, this, not only did the protests here discredit the WTO as an institution, but the alternative vision for how trade and globalization should work moving forward uh, was presented pretty much entirely by the left. It was our space to fill, and for a while, we were the only ones filling it. And, you know, unfortunately, 20 years later, we know that is no longer the case. You know, it's no longer the case that you're with the corporate elites at the WTO or you're with the protesters in the streets. Uh, the corporate-owned media, as you all know, is now attempting to frame the debate on trade and the economy as somehow between Donald Trump's ugly economic nationalism on the one hand and a return to neoliberal business as usual on the other hand. And it, it pains me tremendously to say this, but a lot of people actually buy that. Uh, a lot of people believe that if you're angry at big corporate interests outsourcing jobs, uh, then you should be for Donald Trump in America first. And, you know, the, the president got into power in no small part by exploiting that idea and running on that idea. Uh, and so moving forward today, as we think about the lessons from 99, I hope that we'll think about ways that we can build powerful, progressive coalitions that are unafraid to work with one another across issue areas, uh, as hard as that can be sometimes, 
and they're unafraid to, to just boldly go out there and challenge the, con the conventional wisdom about what is and what isn't possible. Um, you know, I really believe that building and strengthening those coalitions to present our views, our views, for a just and sustainable global economy, that that's gonna be a big part of defeating the growing fascism that's spreading across this country and across the world, uh, and particularly as the climate crisis intensifies and the fight for resources and the refugee crisis and all of that intensifies. Uh, you know, no historical parallel is perfect, um, but there's certainly a parallel between the people who said that corporate globalization as represented by the WTO in 99 was inevitable and was gonna move forward unchallenged. You know, and those who say the same thing about the fossil fuel economy or about economic nationalism today. Um, and so, you know, I take heart that the power that we, that we generated by working together on the left across issue areas, across borders, across organizing cultures, that that power that we did to derail the WTO back then, that that power still exists. Uh, it is still there to be, to be shaped, to be expanded, to be exerted. Um, you know, we just need to trust one another and get to work doing it. Uh, and so with that, let me thank our hosts again and thank all of you for all the work you do. It really does make a difference. Awesome. So I have to admit that of all the things we have going on today, this is the thing that I'm the most excited about. Um, we have been like framed as anti-globalist, and there are things that all of us in this room don't like about trade policy, um, but there's also, um, kind of like Arthur was saying, every one of the topic areas that there's a workshop on today has things that they want from trade policy. Um, it's not just saying no, it's what can we say yes to. And all of these topic areas have things that they would like to say yes to. Um, so I wanted to do a little bit of logistics stuff.